All right, everybody, so we're going to be talking about naming some binary ionic compounds. Now, let's take a look at the periodic table and just recall some important information that helps us to identify that a compound is, in fact, ionic. So let's go over here. Okay, and we're looking at our periodic table. Remember, we're using that stair-step divider in order to figure out is a element a metal or is it a non-metallic element. So if it is to the left of the stair-step divider, we're talking about something which is a metal. If it is above and to the right of the stair-step divider, we're talking about something which is non-metallic. In ionic compounds, binary ones, we're looking to have a metal combined with a non-metallic element. All right, let's move back over here. So here we have the formula for a chemical compound. We see that the formula is NaCl. Now, we want to, from this information, be able to determine what's the name of this compound. So we look up Na on the periodic table, and we find that that is sodium. We look up Cl on the periodic table, and that's chlorine. Now, when we have nonmetallic elements, they are going to form negatively charged ions, and we change the name ending from uh, chlorine to chloride. So the name of this compound is going to be sodium chloride. I'll write that in. Now, one other important thing to know about this is that ionic compounds always have to be electrically neutral. So we need to know what is the charge of a sodium ion, what's the charge of a chloride ion. Let's go back to the periodic table for that. Okay, so sodium belongs to this category of elements called the alkali metals. They all have plus one charges when they form ions. Chlorine, over here, belongs to the halogens, and when they form ions, they all have a negative one charge. Now, some other important ones that we need to know. This column, the alkaline earth metals, will have a plus two charge as ions. The boron family will have a, sorry, the boron family right here will have a plus three charge. Oxygen family, as they form ions, minus two. Nitrogen family, minus three. And we have some variability with the carbon family. Okay, back over to the board. So sodium chloride is a combination of a positive one sodium ion and a minus one chloride ion. So we're going to get a one to one ratio of the ions, which gives us an electrically neutral compound. Oh my goodness, my marker's dying. I need a different marker. Now we wouldn't normally write it like this. But we can see that with one sodium and one chloride ion, the charges will balance to give us an electrically neutral compound. Now, calcium chloride. Calcium is in that group of plus two ions, and chloride <coughs> is in that category of minus one, so we'd actually need two chloride ions to pair with the calcium to produce an electrically neutral compound. The way that we would write this is CaCl2. Now, um, we've got two more examples to take a look at. Aluminum bromide. Aluminum is in that plus three category. <coughs> bromide is minus one. It is a halogen. So you can see that I need three bromide ions to cancel the plus three charge of the aluminum ion. So that's where I came up with AlBr3. The name of this would be aluminum bromide. Finally, we're looking at the example of gallium oxide. Gallium is in that family where it's going to have a plus three charge as an ion. Oxygen is going to have a minus two charge. So now the math is a little bit trickier. This is basically like finding a common multiple. I need to find the right number of gallium plus threes and oxide minus twos so they'll add up to a total of zero. Right now I've got too much positive, so I'll add another oxide. Now I've got plus three, I've got minus two, minus two, so I'm not at zero yet. Let's add another gallium. Now I've got plus six, minus four, so we can see that we just need one more oxide. So we found the common multiple here of two and three. It is six, so the way that we would write the formula for this compound would be GA2O3. All right, thank you.